In a fairly recent video, I took a look at another variant of this spiral light, and it was just white, but it gave you a few shades of white and it let you dim the intensity. And a few of you in the comments said, it'd be nice if A, the light was emitted on the outside instead of the inside, which this one does, but also it'd be nice if it was RGB addressable color changing LEDs. Well, it turns out they do a version with RGB color changing LEDs, and if I plug this in, the same little thing happens, the little blue light lights down here. But if I turn it on, it starts chasing lots of spirally lights. Now, I'm going to change the lighting so you can see the effects. Uh, but I won't show you them all because there's a lot, and they actually get quite nauseating very quickly. So I'm just going to set that up now. One moment, please. Okay, so there's no way around this. It's going to be fairly nauseating. Let's try jumping into... This is the first effect, and it does default to this every time you power it up. So the next effect is actually not too bad. It's a slow uh, rainbow chase down from the top of the light down to the bottom. Press the button again. Kind of jumpy. And missing, missing gaps. It's actually stepping over several LEDs. Uh, a, a whoosh of a white. Press again and it's going to do all these other colours that's going to push the white and blah, 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 blah. Let's just see. And then the next one is uh, this. Anyway, you know what? I could just, I'll just click through them and there's lots of them and they're pretty nauseating. What's this going to do? Just static? Okay. That's refreshing. Right, anyway. Uh, watch your eyes, the light is coming back. Okay, so now you've seen it doing its nauseating thing. I mean, it's okay, it's quite, it would be interesting in the background. But I do want to know, I noticed that some of the effects look as though they're, the controller is putting out a high number of outputs. Uh, so I can test that. I can wire this up to a little test rig that I've pre-prepared. That's, that's assuming it works. That's assumed they are WS2812B LEDs. And what I can do is I've got 120 LEDs here. And if I wire it into this little controller here, well, let's unplug the controller and open it up. But if I wire them into it, then theoretically, I can see how many of the LEDs it addresses. And we can reverse engineer the circuit and I'll give you a quick recap on how these LEDs are addressed in the first place. So just like the last controller, I mean, I'm saying this, I've not tried opening this one yet. It looks as though it is held together with the little plastic friction fit pins. This is good. Here's the circuit board, which is not coming out. It's just come out. There's a... There's very little. Okay, just like the other one, there's very little. It's all being done by a little mysterious microcontroller. So tell you what... Uh, these output pins, I'm going to solder on a little connector onto that and uh, then connect it into these and we'll see how many LEDs it drives. One moment, please. And resume with the first part of the test. What we've got here is a little test setup where I've put two 64 LED arrays in series to see how many LEDs light. So if we zoom down onto this and I just squish these in a little bit together and I turn the light off, we can see that it's controlling 64 plus 32 is 96 LEDs. But there's a problem. Watch what happens, and I'll give you a flicker alert because there's going to be flicker. Watch what happens if I plug in a different brand of WS2812B type clone type LEDs. And you can immediately see that the, it, the data is not getting through intact. And I reckon that this chip is bit bashing the data, which means instead of using a dedicated sort of driver for this type of LED, they've really cost cut it to the edge. And it's only going to work with some very tolerant LEDs of a fairly wide timing range. Now, watch your eyes. The lights come back. But before I do that, actually, let's skip through some of the patterns. OK. These ones are mostly working. I did notice I'll skip in until we get... That's reasonable enough. It does refresh the data even when they're static. I know this because it was glitching like heck when it wasn't quite managing to keep up. Right, tell you what, watch your eyes. The light is coming back. 
The light is back with a bit more shimmer. Let me turn the light back off again and show you the pixel string. I'll definitely give you a flicker, flicker alert this time. These are going to be very flickery. The data is just not making it through. But if I keep skipping through until I find a simple program that it can actually manage. Let's see if I can find something else that's more static. Oh, sorry, it's so flickery. It really is struggling to keep up the data for these LEDs. Oh, I'm going to give up, right? Tell you what, watch your eyes. The light is coming back again. Anyway, I shall unplug that now. It's hideous. It works, but they've literally probably had to find an LED tape that it worked with. It's not universally compatible. Let me just put the pixels down out the way and uh, bring the spiral up again. We'll look at the spiral, then I'll draw you a quick sketch of why the data was being gar garbled like that. Data or data, your preference. This thing has an annoyance. Let me just uh, focus up to a nice level here. We've got plus five volts, zero volts and data. So we've got red, black and white. And you'd think that red would be plus 5 volts and black would be negative, the 0 volts, and then the white would be the data because it's the one that's left. But no, red is positive, white is negative, and black was the data for some reason. Let's see if we can get this little rubber cap off the end of this. And peel the strip up and take a look at what's here. We have diagonally mounted LEDs. There's that uh, red to positive, white to negative thing. That's just weird. No capacitors either. They normally have capacitors uh, next to each LED. But this is a construction, it's basically addressable LED tape just running up the full end of this. And uh, this handy diffuser material just snapped over the front of it. Right, time to do a quick sketch for you and show you what was going on with the data. Then we shall reverse engineer that circuit board and see what the circuitry looks like. So I'll just grab the notepad one moment, please. So to understand why the LEDs were glitching like that, you have to understand how WS2812B LEDs work. It's a complicated LED, but it makes it very, very kind of simple-ish to use. It's a very, very clever design. So typical LED tape, or one of these panels looks like this. It's got the common positive, so this is 5 volts, plus 5 volts, and 0 volts. And it's got data in that then links from data out from the first LED to data in of the second. You may be getting deja vu. I featured this in a fairly recent video about little uh, copper wire lights. But here's what happens. The processor, to start... when. When these are actually displaying data uh, and, and they're actually waiting for a signal, as soon as the processor takes it from the sort of standby state to data state and starts transmitting data, it has to do so at a very specific speed. And once it's started, it cannot stop because it has to send the whole string of LEDs, in this case, 96 times 3 bytes. So what happens is that the data goes into the first LED and the first LED doesn't just pass the data through straight away. It's got a data in and a data out, and it takes the first three bytes, and then it just ignores all the further data and switches the data through to the next LED. The next LED doesn't know what's happened before. All it sees is the next three bytes coming, so it takes the next three bytes, passes it through, and each LED just takes three bytes, red, green, and blue, for the display. After they've taken their three bytes of data, they wait and they're looking on this going to a sort of standby state. Now, there's a sort of, you can pause very briefly with this, but if you pause too long, that's the signal for all the LEDs to actually transfer the data out. So there's two things going wrong here. Firstly, the data speed is not totally in sync, particularly I noticed that Certain effects couldn't quite keep it in sync all the way along the string. And that does suggest that the so they're trying to generate the patterns and colors and software or read out memory to actually get it into the uh, LEDs. So what's happening there is that uh, if it goes out of sync, 
it might be okay for the first few LEDs, but the timing will potentially, depending on what the processor is doing, it will actually start shifting, and then LEDs will pick up rogue data. If the processor can't keep up with the rate the data is going out, you get that effect where suddenly the end of the string starts glitching, showing random colours or just goes out completely. And what's happening there is it's uh, pausing so long during the processing that these LEDs are saying, right, okay, that's the end of the stream of data, and they're just putting it straight out and ignoring the further data. Um, that also potentially garbles the start data again, um, and you get weird, weird effects. Okay, now we've seen how the processor garbles the data in this case. Uh, let's take a look at the controller. So I shall take a picture of that and we can examine the circuitry. One moment, please. Reverse engineering is complete. Let's explore it. I'll zoom down just a tiny bit, but not too much because, well, I've kind of like taped two bits of the image together to give the uh, button side and the microcontroller side, and I flipped that image so that these all tally up these nice plated through holes, and there's a lot of plated through holes, so kind of using it as a bus bar across the front here. Um, although strange, the 5 volt, which carries the same amount of current, uh, has no uh, buffering. They could have actually kind of squeezed a little bit in there, but, but they didn't. I think they may have planned it, because look at that, just plated through holes, just going nowhere, unless they've reused a the design. But anyway, I digress. Here is the microcontroller. Here is 5 volts coming in, and that 5 volts does a couple of things. It goes via a 20 ohm resistor to this capacitor to provide a supply to the microcontroller, but it also goes via this 1K resistor to this LED, which is just then connected to the negative rail and just therefore lights while there's power there. Um, the buttons, you have four buttons, power, which turns the unit on and off, reset, which resets to the first effect, and up and down for just basically going backwards and forwards through the effects. Um, and they are referenced to the zero volt rail and they just pull one of the pins down on the microcontroller. The uh, output has a capacitor here, a little token gesture capacitor between the positive and the zero volt. And it also has a resistor between an output pin for the microcontroller and that is the data line going out to the LEDs. Let me show you the schematic. I've tried bit, passion, bit bashing with a PIC-12 microcontroller running on its internal 4 megahertz oscillator and it was pushing things to the edge. I noticed that Julian Ayla also did that, had a go at that, but he also found that it was pushing things to the edge of these LEDs. But it's worth mentioning that if you don't have to do much processing, you can drive one or two of these WF, WF, WS2812B LEDs from just one pin of a microcontroller. Uh, without too much of a software overhead. If you're just simply looking for colours like red, green, blue, sand, magenta, yellow or white, just basically all the LEDs on at full power or at zero. Or if you want, you can scale it. In the way I do it, I'd have uh, two subroutines. One would send out a byte for basically just all zeros and one would send out a byte for the desired intensity for the LEDs and then it would just alternate between those to actually send the colour to the LED. It just means one pin can get the several colours. Anyway, I have digressed again. Uh, here's the incoming 5 volts, which also goes straight out to the LED tape. Here's the 0 volts, which also goes straight out to the LED tape. There is the indicator LED, a nice little... Uh, was that, that was a blue LED, wasn't it? Yes. I shall colour it blue, just to give the illusion of excitement. There is the blue LED. Um... There's the filter for the microcontroller to give it a stable supply, despite the fact that output's all glitching with pulses modulation and strobing LEDs. So there's a 20 ohm resistor and a capacitor to provide that stable supply. There are the pull down. Oh, there's one, one connection missing here. It's that connection, the zero volt connection. There's the four buttons just pulling to the zero volt rail with internal pull up resistors. One pin is just not used. Coincidentally, pin four, which is the master clear pin of the PIC 12 microcontroller. I wonder if this is what this software is based on. And then the output going via this 1K resistor to the data line. Um, and that uh, token gesture capacitor to provide some stability to the LED tape. Now, this resistor is interesting because 
It's to protect against that data line getting accidentally shorted to the 5 volt or the 0 volt rail and damaging the microcontroller. Um, but in reality, if you've got a longish run to the LED tape, that uh, resistor there limit and the capacitance of the cable run can actually cause a slight uh, squishing of the waveform and it can cause issues. But that's it. Ultimately, it's a very simple thing. They have cost cut it to the very edge by using one microcontroller to smash out data as fast as possible. And then they've used kind of matching LED tape. I wonder if, uh, if they use this with longer effects or they decided it was too unstable for the longer runs of LEDs and they just ended up using it with short runs. But either way, it's interesting. It's a visually neat effect it's cheap i'll provide a link to it it came from aliexpress and it's showing how a microcontroller and these serial addressable leds can result with a bit of clever programming in a semi-usable effect i wouldn't use that bit bashing approach in a super critical must work environment but for a home ornament like this it's not too bad and it just means they're pushing the software to the limits in this little microcontroller but that does take a bit of skill so they have to be congratulated for managing to do that at least